Okay, I'm Spelman Evans Downer. I'm talking about my Abstracted Directions exhibition at the Yucca Valley Art Center. I'm here at the Russian invasion of Ukraine. I want to give a little bit of a background about my interest in battlegrounds as a subject. Partly, I grew up in a military family. My dad was in World War II, Battle of the Bulge. My grandfather was a three-star general working with MacArthur to take back the Philippines in the Pacific front during World War II. Now that I'm so much older and I've been doing art and I've been doing landscape art, as I've been saying, the interests in landscape and military conflict and planning have a lot in common. It turns out that the battlefield conditions are often uh, important because of landscape, because of topography. Who has the high ground? Who has the low ground? What obstacles in the way? What kind of strategies can be brought to bear to overcome your enemy? Let me cut to Ukraine. And uh, I'm standing in front of a uh, work that was done right at the very beginning of the invasion, uh, which started in, uh, as I recall, February 24th, 2022. Western military analysts saw the buildup, so when the war began, a lot of people were looking, including myself, I was already interested in, in uh, military conflicts. So I followed very closely the events, and to this day, I, I check in almost every day with uh, developments on the battlefront. The Russians were coming in from the east. They only got to the outskirts of the city. If you look closely, you'll see glitter which in this case is not star maps like Los Angeles, but it's explosions, bombs, missiles, booby traps, ordnance. The other big direction was coming from Belarus along the west side of the Dnipro River. And the Russians were able to get to Hostomel Airport. It's a very interesting story to describe the whole battle, but my goal is to just give an overview of why I'm doing this and, and, and show you some of the individual paintings. I did about six or seven of these Kiev paintings. What I find fascinating was I was doing them while the battle was raging. Now, my earlier works, Waterloo has been over for a long time. Vietnam has been over for a long time. Guernica across the way has been over for a long time. Gettysburg has been over for a long time. So it's really very, very different if you're trying to paint something that's actually unfolding, because you don't know where it's going to go. Anyway, the Russians eventually were stopped here near uh, Hostomel Airport. They also were positioned at Bucha, which is, uh, as many people now know, a, a site of tremendous atrocities. And I already was aware of that. So this airport in the red and all of the bombs going off, I knew that was a conflict zone. I did not know exactly what was happening. I found that out later. Kiev held, and it's, it's been a very good thing, that the Russians, who just blatantly invaded another country because they want a lot of its land and they want to obliterate the Ukrainians, were not able to take Kiev. This, this painting is actually uh, a personal gift to President Zelensky. And I hope one day that I'm able to give it to him. I think he would appreciate it. As the war unfolded, the next big place was Mariupol. And I didn't know anything about Mariupol. All I knew was that the Russians were invading it. I grew up where uh, communists were called reds. So I'm <laughs> of that mindset that if you want to be communist, if you want to be Russian, you're probably going to be red. So I, I love red color, as it turns out. So I, I tend to use that a lot in these paintings. This is Mariupol itself. And the city is just being obliterated by artillery. And the Russian fleet is firing in and destroying the city. Uh, I did a number of paintings. This is Mariupol too, but it's a, it's a close-up of the Avastol steel plant, which actually is it's in this one. I just didn't know it was a, a steel plant. 
And again, I'm doing these paintings while it's underway. So as the battle's raging, Kiev has been uh, not conquered, and now the Russians are working on Mariupol. And as it's developing, I'm zooming in and seeing close-ups and following the news stories, and I hear that this Avastol steel plant is just an amazing plant that was built after World War II, and as I understand it, had bomb bunkers, so it was a perfect place for the Ukrainians to hold up, and it was a very hard place for the Russians to conquer. Eventually, they were able to take it, and they sent people off to penal colonies and all kinds of other atrocities. I, uh, I brought this small painting, which was done much more recently. It was just done a couple months ago, so a year after the initial devastation of Mariupol. Vladimir Putin has um, basically annexed this part of Ukraine, illegally, I might add, and then renamed the city. I, I find the name to be very telling and very ironic. He calls uh, this city now the city of military glory, which if that's military glory to just literally go in and completely bomb and destroy all buildings, <laughs> I don't see any glory in any of that. Uh, this is uh, depictions of Bakhmut, both of these, and there's a bigger one on the other side of the gallery. Bakhmut is the city that's still under siege. It's been under siege for months and months. I think it's seven, eight, nine months at this point. The Russians are determined to take it, and the Ukrainians are determined not to have them take it. It's become a symbolic city that way. It, too, is being reduced to rubble as we speak. The Ukrainians have been holding uh, some of the center of the city. They've lost all the eastern side. And the Russians, the, the way that they figure they can take it is by blowing up all the buildings so that they have no place to make cover for their campaign to keep the invaders from taking over their country. This one, I, I referred to it earlier, is Hostomel Airport. It's a, it's a close-up. It's up by Bucha. It's up in the upper left-hand corner of Kiev. And a uh, fascinating story. Um, when the Russians invaded, they had plans to take over the airport because it's an extremely long runway that you can land military transport planes. They had a, a fleet of transport planes up in the sky when the war began. Uh, evidently, we gave the Ukrainians some intelligence that this airport would, would have been a strategic place for the Russians to invade. And sure enough, they did. They sent in uh, helicopters, and there was a, a fight for the airport. The Ukrainians were repulsed. They went and hid in the woods. I'm going to just try and make this as brief as possible. And then they came out and they were able to take back the airport. The planes that had all this military apparatus that was meant to invade Kyiv weren't able to land. And by the time the battle was over, the Russians actually won, but the airport runway was destroyed and the planes were unable to land. And it was a, a real turning point in the war. So we got uh, those that I've talked about. Just a little bit more background. This is probably the oldest painting that's of the military subject, Gettysburg, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, one of the turning points in the American Civil War. I was able to go to Gettysburg. I was able to go to uh, Fredericksburg. I spent uh, three winters staying with my two sisters in Arlington, Virginia. I grew up on the West Coast, as I mentioned earlier, in Pasadena, so I didn't know much about uh, Civil War or the Civil War battlefields, but I found it a fascinating subject. Let me conclude by saying Gettysburg is one of the most famous battles that was shaped by the topography, as I mentioned earlier. So this is called the Fish Hook, and it's just a low, hilly region in the section of Pennsylvania that's slowly building up to the Appalachian Mountains. 
and the uh, union was able to position themselves on the high ground and the high ground was the place to be. So uh, Lee and the Confederates, the famous uh, Pickett's Charge came across this way. It's actually here, in fact, I'm trying to depict it with these marks in the, in the paint there. But because they were on the low ground and the, the Union Army was on the high ground, uh, they were unable to take the hill and it was a turning point in the war and Lee's army never got any further. The war dragged on for a very long time, but uh, it, it, the landscape itself was such an important part of the subject. So that's uh, military battles, landscape, the relationship, and I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs>